when we were planning the church, um, we had this, the way we thought about it was, if you're really gonna do something way beyond what you can do, what you need is you need a team of people um, who can really make a difference. And so we came up with this idea of game changer, and I love the wording, even back then, I still love it now. Um, because when you think of a game changer for us, it was really not someone who just played the game. Uh, I'm a big sports guy and there's a lot of things to sports, but like there's a lot of people, if, you, if you're playing basketball that are on the court, for example, at a time, you have 10 players. But a game changer is more than someone just playing the game. A game changer who is someone who comes in at key moments and their difference that they make can be felt by both teams. They change the outcome of the game, they change the direction of the game. And so when we were thinking of, when we plan a church, you just need some game changers. We weren't thinking of people who like wanted to come and attend a service and leave, or, or maybe they were in it wherever they were at in their faith, it was just for themselves. We wanted some people that could alter the very course of our church by the difference that they were willing to make. A lot of people come to a service at The Pursuit and they see, um, me preaching on stage, you see a worship team, you see some key staff members, and you can begin to think that they're the people who make the church go. And while they are an important part of making the church go, it would not be a movement of God without a large volume of God's people getting in the game and serving and praying and chasing after God's heart and inviting friends and praying for neighbors and being bold witnesses in their in their their work and wherever God's called them to be. And so truly the unsung heroes of the church aren't those who are on the staff page of the Pursuit Church. Um, it's those who are quietly serving week in and week out being difference makers for the church. Church is so much more than a building. It's just not a building. And what blew my mind is that week after week, people would come and they would hear about Jesus and they would connect with God in a um, way that changed them. And then just the community that people had and they kept coming back. And so we're always grateful to our volunteers. There's no way that we could have um, and still can't function without them. In the summer of 2014, we had just moved to Minot. We were looking for a church. And it's funny because that's the beginning of summer. And a lot of churches on their website, they change their hours of when church starts. So we went to this one church and no one was there. And we're like, okay. And so we look on the website and we went to another church and no one was there. And we're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> where is everybody? So we, we sat down at the little Starbucks over by the hospital. And John's like, I'm just gonna look one more time. And sure enough, the pursuit pops up. He goes, oh my gosh, he's just around the corner. Let's go to this church. So we walk in the door and we're like, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> and we walk down the stairs and it was dark and you know, and stuff. But we go through the whole service and many times when God speaks to us, you know, God will say something to me, God will say something to John, and we'll be like, okay, what did he say to you? Well, what did he say to you? So after the service, we were like, this is our church. God told each of us, this is our church. The first service that we attended was the December monthly service that they did as like preview services for the official launch for the pursuit. And just the, like from the moment we walked in, uh, we felt there was just an overwhelming sense that it was the place that God wanted us to be as a family. Um, so friendly and inviting. Uh, it was raw. It was real. Um, and uh, it just, it was immediately felt like home for yeah. both of us. I reached out to a friend of mine and I asked her where she go to church. And she said, well, we're going to check out this new church downtown called The Pursuit. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll go, I, I'll meet you down there. She goes, no, we'll come and pick you up. So they came and picked me up and we get downtown and I'm like, where, where are we going? And she goes, it's that building over there. And I said, that's the old strip club. And she goes, yes, it was, but it's made into a new church called The Pursuit. I'm like, okay. So I walked in with them. They went ahead of me and I walked in behind them. And from the moment I walked in the building, there was this overwhelming feeling that came over me. 
and I was in tears and I was like, what is going on? You had the worship music playing as you walked in the door and it was, it was so emotional for me. I could not figure out what it was, but I know now it was truly the Holy Spirit coming into me and filling me and I knew that this is where I belonged. I was getting filled with God's Word. And I went home afterwards and my husband came um, uh, after work and I said, I found us a new home. And he came with me the next weekend and we've been coming ever since. We uh, were fortunate enough to be invited to participate from the, the early stages and so uh, Tom and Shannon and Nick really drew us in with the mission and vision. And Shannon is my sister, for yep. those of you that don't know. And we were living out in California. Josh was in the Marine Corps. We were stationed at Camp Pendleton. And it was kind of that season where we were thinking about getting out, hadn't really decided like what the next step would look like for us. We had one child at the time. And I remember Tom called Josh on the phone and kind of pitched this whole vision and idea for this church. So there was always an opportunity to jump in and serve and and it's in, you know it's part of the I think it's part of the DNA of what has made the pursuit what it is yeah. over the years is it, it's such a great place for people to get engaged yeah. and to serve and so many people over the years I think I just I mean the hundreds and hundreds of people that we've seen come in that had never been part of a church before, had no idea what serving was, mm -hmm. and there was a place for them to get engaged yeah. and to grow in their faith mm -hmm. and to meet people that could help them walk that road together and feel like they belong to something bigger than themselves um, is part of the secret sauce, I think, of the pursuit. Being a part of the pursuit has grown my relationship with Christ, helped me know the purpose that I have here on earth and doing it much more than just doing the right thing for people, but doing it to, to make an impact in their lives and like allowing God to use my gifts and talents for His good mm -hmm. instead of just my own selfish motives or, or any of that. So like definitely wrecked my life as far as uh, just changed it completely um, from a focus on myself to to much more of a focus on others and and uh, what I can be doing for his, to further his kingdom, not, not further my earthly kingdom. Um, and when we came to the pursuit, um, that was one thing I wanted to get involved. So I started out with um, being a greeter, and it's been amazing, all the people I've met through that. Um, but I think um, one of the, some of the things is um, all the different activities that the pursuit has done, like sports camp, I got to be involved with, um, with that. Um, I, I think one of my most favorite things is I got to go on a mission trip down to Mexico to be with our sister church. Terry and I got to go with that. Um, and then just um, then ending up getting to be on staff and growing so much more than I ever thought I could. I feel like I'm more blessed. I, I just feel, what's the word, um, fills my cup. It just does. Like, like in, it, at first you feel like, oh, I don't know if I can sign up for that thing. I don't know if I can make that commitment. But then when you do it and you, and you become a part of the team and you see all that God's doing, I don't know, it just, it fuels you in a way. Um, just, and you, and, you, and you also, I don't know, it just gets you outside of yourself. I think there was just the joy of being involved in a place where we could use the gifts that God had given us in a lot of different ways. And uh, I mean, the trajectory of our faith walk from the moment that we stepped in and said, yes, we don't wanna just go here, we wanna be part of this and we wanna be engaged, we wanna be involved, we wanna do everything we can to support the ministry um, with our time, with our resources. It shaped us deeply. Don't settle for coming on Sunday mornings and being a consumer, but be a contributor, whether it's serving on Sundays, whether it's diving into community outreach, whatever you can do, mm -hmm. do it for Christ. You know, it's you're blessed to be a part of the pursuit, but it's much bigger than the pursuit. So yeah, just encourage everyone to be active in their faith. And, and I'm talking to myself too. And it's gonna be messy and relationships are messy and 
question. Like we've gotten involved in a lot of different things and it was hard to walk and journey through different seasons with different people, but it was so worth it. Yep. Yeah. Yes, getting involved and jumping in takes time. Um, sometimes it's not convenient, but at the end of the day, the amount that it fills you up and in the journey that you're on, the connection that you have to Christ, the relationships that you make with others, and truly the difference that you see it making in other people's lives is 100% worth it.